Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, we're going to be looking at some self-defense canes. And you know what that means. Unfortunately, we're going to have to test this thing out and I'm going to have to get shocked. But before we begin, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. One of the weapons I really like that people don't talk about very often is the cane. And if you think about it, it's really the perfect martial arts weapon. It's inconspicuous and it can be used for long range strikes or even short range techniques. Now I personally prefer a just standard wooden cane and we carry some really nice ones on KarateMart.com. But today we're going to be looking at some of the more unique ones that are used for self-defense purposes. The first cane we're going to look at is the indestructible plastic hook cane. And I really like this cane because it's very similar to a wooden cane, but it's made of this fiber filled nylon that makes it virtually indestructible. Now there's some things I like about it and some things I dislike about it. I would say the main thing I dislike about it is that it's a little bit too heavy. I personally like a cane that's a little bit lighter. Uh, we have some canes on KarateMart.com that are made with rattan or lighter wood that just allow you to do techniques a little bit easier. But for self-defense purposes, a lot of people prefer a heavier cane so that you can strike a little bit harder. Now let's look at the advantages of this cane. There's a lot of things I really like about it. I would say probably my favorite thing is that it's got this nice hooked end to it. And that can be used for a lot of different martial arts techniques. Let's say someone comes up to you and grabs you by the collar. You could use that hooked end to dig into a pressure point. That actually hurts really bad by pulling down on that. Um, or you could use this to hook a kidney. I mean, this is a really a smart little addition to this cane. Now there's two other things I like about this cane. First off, it has these grips here and here, which allow you to do your techniques without worry about your hands slipping and losing control of your weapon. The other thing I like about it is that it's got these little lines here that kind of tell you good spaces to actually take a hacksaw and cut it down to the size that you want. Because for me, because I'm tall, this is a good size cane, but for a lot of people, you might actually want to just shorten it just a little bit. So I really like this cane. I think it's a really well-made weapon, uh, but let's look at some of the other ones that we have. Now the next type of canes we're going to look at is the hidden sword canes. But before we start looking into these, I just want to mention that these are actually illegal in so many areas that you need to check your local laws before even considering carrying something like this. But at KarateMart.com we carry three different types of sword canes and we're going to look at them all really quick. The first type of sword cane we carry is the type where you unscrew the sword from the shaft of the cane. Now there's some obvious disadvantages to this type of sword cane, but there's also a big advantage. The major disadvantage is that it's slow. If you're actually being attacked, I don't think you'd have time to unscrew the sword from the cane in order to protect yourself. But the major advantage is that if you screw this together, you actually have a pretty solid cane that you could use for different techniques. You could trap someone's arm, or you could even use it as a blunt instrument to strike your attacker. So in that respect, this is actually a pretty decent cane. And this is called the Hidden Assault Sword Cane. The next type of sword cane we carry uses a button snap clip to attach the sword to the shaft of the cane. This specific sword cane is called the Traveler's Sword Cane. And I actually really like it because it's got a very firm connection into the shaft of the cane so you can actually use it as a striking instrument. But also, with this type of connection method, it's really easy to detach the sword from the shaft of the cane. You just kind of twist and pull out. So that's very, very quick in case you were ever attacked. The last type of sword cane we carry uses compression to hold the sword into the shaft of the cane. Now we have a couple of different sword canes that use this method. And this specific one is called the hidden sword cane. Now, I really like this sword cane for a couple of reasons. First off, it's got a nice weight to it, and it also looks a lot like a normal cane. And it just feels really strong and well made. Now, the thing I don't like about it is that the blade of the sword is so long that it's just a little bit awkward pulling it out of the shaft of the cane. Now, the other one we carry that's similar to this is called the tactical sword cane. 
And if you look at this, it's very similar to the hidden sword cane, but it's got these unique finger grooves that allow you to have a good control of the weapon. And I guess what I like the most about this is that it's got a much shorter blade to it. But it's not a standard blade, it's actually more of a spearing blade. So I actually think this is an awesome sword cane, um, but again, make sure you check your local laws before carrying anything like this. The last type of cane we're going to look at is our self-defense stun cane. Now this is interesting because about six months ago I did a video on stun guns that was actually fairly popular on YouTube and I had a number of people commenting that we should carry stun canes. So I went on this huge search to test out all the different stun canes that were available and I came across this one which seemed to be about the best of them. Some of the other ones had kind of a short stun gun that you would pull out of the shaft that just seemed slow. And then there was one where there were sparks at the bottom of it, but I was worried that when you're using the cane itself, it would kind of mess up the diodes on it. So this seemed to be about the best stun cane that I could find. Now the disadvantage of this cane is that it's very obvious that it's not a normal cane. You can see clear as day that it's got its stun portion at the end of the cane which is actually pretty good placement for that stun section because if someone were to try to grab it from you, you could just shock them with it. Now one of the things I really like about this cane is that when you push the switch once, you get a nice bright LED light. And that could be really good if you're traveling at night. Now to use it, you push the switch up one more time to turn off the safety. And then you've got this trigger right here that just makes it really easy and super convenient to use. Now we've never actually tested this out and I don't like to sell anything that we haven't tested out because we want to make sure that it's actually effective. So I'm going to hand this over to my assistant and have her shock me with it. So let's just see how this goes. Jeez. <sighs> that really hurt. Um, okay, yeah, that, that could definitely be an effective weapon. Um, ah. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. Uh, I like it. And what I, what I like the most about it is you can actually gain some, some distance between you and your attacker with it. So she didn't shock me for long. She only shocked me for a split second. But I can imagine if you could keep someone away and actually strike them with some of that, I think it could be a really good weapon. So anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. And check out KarateMart.com for all the different stun weapons we carry and unique hidden weapons that we carry. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.